Good afternoon, guys. Uh, a quick video on the um, Hydrojet Lazy Spa units. So uh, there's not much in the way of information on these pump sets um, and their fault coding online. There's a couple of guys that show the maintenance schedules, and it's very vague and stuff. But, so there's also, um, um, you know, there's there, people try their best to show what EO2 is all about. Really, EO2 is just a fault which occurs in indicating a circulation issue, you know, which protects the pump. Um, but sometimes, and a lot of, I think this can happen to a lot of people, you're going to get the EO2 fault represented by the, something a bit more upstream of the problem, and it's not actually going to be circulation. Now, you're going to forgive me, because I'm not going to do take twos with this thing. It's, it's taken me a hell of a long time to get this all sorted and find out what's going on. But basically, this is your hydrojet system. So there's my pump. It's all open. Excuse me, it is raining, but I have to get this done. So you can see there's the control panel, similar to everybody else's. Of course, it's got the hydro uh, function as well. But there's your reset button. I'll explain things very quickly here. I don't want this to get too wet. I've disconnected all this stuff, and I'll explain why. The first things first, even despite what's in the manual and on videos, and people say the legend of the piping is ABC. Nobody actually marks it anywhere. So do yourselves a favor. Mark your uh, your pipelines ABC accordingly. Um, I've marked both the cover and the pipes. B being your suction for both your hydro spa blower, your water jet, and your cleaning filtration suction. Your air blower, which is this unit over here, filtered. And your discharge, which is A. And that's, again, the filter pump unit and the jet water, which is the outer circumference. And if you look down there, you can see that my pipes are very clean. And you, what's down there? That's the magnet switch, which most of you know about. Is this little unit here, which, which, which monitors the system for flow. And if there's a disruption in A or B from blockage, or whatever, that little flap, which is like a non-return valve, also acts as an interlock between the, the the jet unit, which closes the jet blasting down the pump, and runs it out the discharge line on A. That's like an interlock. So it's normally open. When it's closed, when it's closed normally closed it keeps the pump running like a retaining circuit if it drops out EO2 faults and that's where you get EO2 from however problem I've got along with many others is that the fault actually occurs before this this unit this of mine is working fine this is your thermocouple for temperature measurement of the water because this is your discharge line this is your discharge line this is your heater matrix which is two elements in there I think there's two you can also disconnect all this and clean it all out, by the way. These pipes are very difficult to get off. They're quite tight and they've got O-rings on them. So just be careful. You know, you cut yourself badly. And you'll have noticed that I've actually got my pump taken out. That's because I've had to take this out to find out what was actually wrong and bench test it. And I have actually found the problem by doing that, which you will not find online anywhere. Nonetheless, this is the transformer as the power supply for the pump and another pump. And it's fully sealed and it's... A 12 volt uh, safety supply out of your PCB board over there, so it's pretty secure. But just to keep things protected, I'm just going to keep this covered for now <coughs> while I show you what's going wrong here. There's the pump, there's the model number. Please focus. I don't have a GoPro, I've got one of my fancy gadget smartphones, which are ever so useless. What did I discover? Well, I bench tested this unit on a 12 volt battery, and lo and behold. It doesn't turn over it's it there's movement and from what I can tell it's a um, it's an electromagnet stator yoked DC motor <coughs> with a permanent magnet armature with a, a plastic impeller attached to it so just bear with me while I take some screws apart yeah guys I'm so sorry about this it's really hard to do and I'm going to show you what went wrong okay um, and this is what no one explains online, except for one guy with an air jet, which very kindly went through great detail to show people how to maintain and replace things on, light, on these units. And it's with that understanding that, you know, you, you feel just that much better that you've now found the problem and you know what to do with it. And personally, for me, if this pump isn't up to, this, up to the job, which I've, I've always had my suspicions of. I'm going to actually bin it 
and I'm going to replace it with an aquarium pump or a pond pump of my own 12 volt unit with similar dimensions so I can still get the duty and probably something that lasts longer now frustratingly I've already filmed this but I'm gonna to have to I had to do it again so again you can see my pump is crystal clear the bush is very much still there and present and inside and it is firm so it's not worn out but I think there is an element of wearing on that I suspect there is the little plastic spindle seems okay it's not cracked or anything but if you look at my magnet armature oh god look at that so to me that doesn't mean anything to me that's just a bit of crack and a bit of corrosion but for some reason I think it has caused a problem and maybe what has happened is the plastic has been cracked and pressed out from the corrosion and it's causing it to be out of round for this hole for the diameter which then causes the pump to not turn sufficiently <laughs> wow so yes it feels great and I'll even put the little spindle in and center it you know and uh, when I close it all up it doesn't turn it, it, it tries to but it's like it gets stuck against the side of the armature. I mean, uh, the side of the stator, the yoke. And then it won't budge. So it's like one of one of the one phase is missing. There's no way you can repair that. Apparently, you can buy these things, uh, replacement stators or armatures, rather. I'm going to try and do that. Failing that, I'm just going to buy myself my own pond pump and stick it inside that box over there use the same socket and wire it up and then off we go anyway guys that's what i wanted to show you as always please like subscribe and ask any questions if you have any and i'm sure this will come of use to some of you rather than waste your time like i did a whole day spent opening and inspecting and cleaning i need to find that the real problem was the pump in the end thank you very much speak to you later